Hello and welcome to Used Car Heaven. Tonight we'll be visiting the car doctor's surgery and as always getting all the insider knowledge from the trading post. But first, it's time to meet this week's lucky punter. This is Paul Williams. He's 24 years old and a student and he's breaking from the student norm a little bit because he wants a hot hat but he doesn't want a boy racer machine. Could be tricky but I reckon we'll find something for him. Oh, Paul, it's a, it's a rare and special beauty. I can see why you love VW with this it, it is. car. It is. It's, it's actually it's my hack, so yes. to speak. It uh, does me for uh, the, 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 the running around of everyday life and battering that you, you tend to give cars in this country. That's my baby. Hello, here comes a picture. That's lovely. Now yeah. we can see then, you really are a confirmed oh, yeah. VW fan. Yeah, yeah. So our mission is going to be to see if, if, with our suggested cars, we can convince you and get you out of VW and into something else. You can have a go. It's going to be tough, isn't it? Let's have a look at our cars. So, Paul, the first of our three suggestions from Peugeot 306 GTI 6. What do you think? Um, love it. It's a, it's a really nice car. I've always liked the Peugeot GTIs. Um, the, the, the 306 is a, a special favourite of mine. Really Very looks pretty fantastic. Car still. Yeah, okay. It really does. Secondly, from Rover, the 25 GTI in a rather fetching green. Um, I think the designer had a lobotomy. I think it really is a very unpretty car. Oh. Um, not at all happy with that. You don't like it? No. Do all no. right, well, finally, oddly enough, a VW Golf. Yeah. Um, strange colour, and it's a five door. Yes, well, you see, we thought it might help get you over your VW obsession. We'll Ooh. try it. We'll dive this one first then. First of all, VWs. What is it about VWs that, that you like so much? Well, um, most of the, the, the original cars that I had when I first passed my driving test uh, were sort of a Mark III Golf TBIs and the, the Vento. Um, and I, I guess whilst they weren't the kind of cars that would make you passionate about a brand, they instilled me with a, a phenomenal amount of confidence. Coming to this golf that we're in, it has grown up a lot compared to the early ones that you had. It's a much bigger car, so how much does it appeal to you now? It's it doesn't seem like a golf. I mean, it, it's the original golf. You know, you knew you were in a car uh, when you when you drive around in those. I mean, you you feel every every bump. There's no real creature comforts. If you want the window down, you've got to break the window down. Imagine winding a window. <laughs> Now here's an interesting fact for you. Can you believe it's 25 years since Volkswagen launched the first ever Golf GTI onto the market? Yes, 25 years ago, so it's Silver Jubilee and all that. They've even launched a commemorative GTI to celebrate the fact. But what about for used GTIs? Well, there are plenty of good ones about if you know where to look. I mean, this car, for example, looks very nice. It's three years old, it's done a low mileage, it's got a nice roomy interior. You can have the GTI these days as a three or a five door, and it's also got a decent sized boot on it. It's a genuine family car. But the most important thing with the GTI range these days is that, the engine size. Now, you would think that two litre means lots of power, but unfortunately it doesn't. Two litre means only 125 brake horsepower. Better to go instead for the 1.8 turbo with 150 brake horsepower and a genuinely quick car. Now I think that VW have slightly diluted the GTI brand these days because you can now get a turbo diesel GTI, for goodness sake. I love the brand, but I think um, I don't, I think that uh, this, as a hot hatch, is no longer a hot hatch. Um, I can see it as being a wonderful motorway car, um, fun on the odd occasion down these bumpy lanes, but I think it's a bit too big.
So then, Paul, as a self-confessed VW nut, you've had your drive in the Golf. What do you think? Um, I, I think it's a smashing car. It has four wheels on each corner, and it goes very, very well. Um, unfortunately, it's a little bit soggy. It didn't like it, can no, you, did it? No, it didn't. It, it's a little bit of understeer, well, actually a lot of understeer, but I think that's mainly due to the weight of the car. Well, I've got to say, I'm quite pleased, because I'm hoping the VW doesn't win, because I want to persuade you to drive something else. Yeah. We've got two other cars for you to have a go at, both non-VWs, and right. we'll get to driving those shortly. Mm -hmm. But first, it's time to nip into the surgery and see what the car doctor's been operating on. Well, we've got a Ford Fiesta, Britain's best-loved small car at some time or other. And they're still very popular in the old car world because they're made up to NREG, so they still look quite modern. Uh, they're very, very good. They're very trusty, very hardy, but they do have a few gremlins. And one of them is one that happens to every single Fiesta that I've come across. That's with a rear wiper, where it's got a mind of its own. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And um, I'm going to show you how you can fix it at home very cheaply. Now, a very modern technique on cars today is to do away with wiring, to make them simpler and cheaper to make. And Ford have actually uh, done away with the earth wire going between the car body and the tailgate, and the system's earth through the tailgate hinge here. And as you'll agree, I think, that it's not an ideal situation because with the tailgate moving up and down, uh, you get movement. And also, you can see it's very rusty, this. And this is our exact problem. This causes the bad connection because we've got to get an electrical connection between this part of the hinge and that one. And I've removed this um, pin already, which just taps out with a hammer. And if I do that, you can get a better idea of what we've got to do. Because for this repair, it's not brain surgery by any means all we do is we take 10 pence worth of uh, emery cloth and we just rub these until they're nice and shiny nice and clean you get all this rust off we pop some grease on there as we put it back together and if we build it up that will have got rid of the electrical gremlin completely might happen again two years down the road or something like that but it, as you can see it's very repeatable and easy to do now this problem drives you mad because I've had horrendous problems with these, trying to find out what it was, and I know of other mechanics that have as well. So if you've got a Ford Fiesta and the rear wiper isn't working, and I can assure you it will stop working at some time, you can very easily repair the bad earth connection between the tailgate and the body by cleaning up the contacts on the hinge. So if you've got that problem, don't spend any money, have a go yourself, and I'm sure you'll come up trumps with a working wiper again. <laughs> Thank you, Simon, and we'll have another life-saving operation next week. Now, Paul, we've already driven the VW Golf. That's right, so we have. got your impressions on that. For your second car, it's a car that, until recently, with the launch of the MG brand, anyway, had a bit of an image problem. That's right. Rover 25 GTI. <laughs> What you said about it when you first saw it, it's a miracle we've even let you drive this thing. But the Rover 25, what do you think? Right, um, give me a flat cap and a barber jacket, I would be perfectly at home. A pipe, maybe? Well, yeah, even a pipe. But, but this is the GTI. No, it's not. It's got a GTI badge stuck on the back. It's not a nice car. I don't, I... First impressions were bad. Um, my impressions, having driven it at anything over 30 miles an hour, are bad. If you want to sit in traffic jams, great. You know what I mean? Fine. Let other people drive past you and think, you know, yeah, there's a person, another person in a cheap Rover. You really because don't like this. I really car, don't. Do you? I, and I t the reason I really don't like it is because I want to like it. It's I want to like Rover because it's British. Well, it's a good job this little rover hasn't got feelings, because you would have hurt him. 
I would have done, you're absolutely right. There is no point in taking an old man's car, sticking a GTI badge on it and big alloys and calling it a sporty hot hatch. This car has been in a fight with a Halfords cosmetic centre and been palmed off out of the garage, practically spun backwards as far as I can tell. No dear. Very, very poor. You don't like it, No, do I can tell. That means at the moment anyway, it's the VW Golf that's ahead on points at least. But I think that could change when Paul gets a drive of this the Peugeot 306 GTI 6 and sees Ian's alternative car as well. So to find out which car Paul finally goes for, join us after the break. Welcome back. So far our punter Paul has driven this, the VW Golf, and is had a go in this as well, the Rover 25 GTI. In a moment or two he'll be getting his first drive in the Peugeot 306 GTI 6. But first, as always on Used Car Heaven, we like to chuck in an alternative option, something you wouldn't necessarily think about when buying a particular kind of car. So Ian, the suspense is killing me, what have you got? OK, Paul, so your original idea was to have a hot hatchback, and I think we've come up with three very good suggestions for you on this week's programme. But why not think of something a little bit different, and perhaps a bit special too? Why not go for a coupe instead? Now, there are lots of different coupes out there on the market, but there's one that stands out to me as being that bit special and that bit different, and it's this, the Fiat Coupe. I like its sharp, angular looks, and although it's not a hatchback at the rear, it has got a decent sized boot on it, and there's also plenty of space in there for the rear seat passengers. And if you are thinking that this Fiat Coupe reminds you of some of the latest BMW concept cars, then you're not wrong, you're on the right lines, because this car was originally designed by a guy called Chris Bangle, who is now BMW's chief designer. So that's where the connection is, with of course, final finishing touches by Pininfarina because it's Italian. Now this car is already beginning to grow on me and I suspect it will do even more once we get out on the road because this is the 20 valve turbo model with 220 brake horsepower. So I suspect this could be a bit of fun. I think my main criticism of this car is the fact that it's lost so much money in the four years since it was new. This S-Reg car would have cost nearly £23,000, but now with 31,000 miles on the clock, this could be yours for about £8,700. What an absolute bargain, and for that you're getting the top of the range car. You're getting the 20 valve turbocharged engine and all 220 brake horsepower. And believe me, it's quick. Once the turbochargers kick in, this thing takes off. As well as the exterior of the Fiat Coupe looking rather different and rather stylish, I love the interior of this car. It's not often that Fiat interiors are fantastic, but this one certainly is. It's got everything on too. All the toys, all the goodies. It's not often you can say that Fiat have come up with a genuine winner, but in the case of this, the Fiat Coupe, they most definitely have. And now that production of these cars has stopped, they're getting cheaper and cheaper on the used market. So Paul, if you want something a bit different, go for a Coupe. Don't go for a Ford Puma or a Cougar, go for a Fiat Coupe instead. Well, in tempting alternative though that is, I have a sneaky suspicion that Paul is going to go for one of my cars. This one, the Peugeot 306 GTI 6. Once he's driven it, that is. So let's give it a go, yeah? See what yeah, let's... This is a very nice car. Um, it looks good. It, you know, as I said right at the very beginning of the show, it it, it really, you know, it, they've always held a, a little place in my heart for these 306s. It handles beautifully. It inspires me with confidence. I want to just sort of like throw it around bends, feel the the, the tires slipping and sliding. You know, really push this car to its limits because you, you feel that that's what you want to do in it. 
During the 1990s, a lot of car manufacturers were thrashing around trying to come up with halfway decent hot hatches and generally failing miserably. But there was one company which was getting it right time after time. It was the French company Peugeot, who had the 106, the 206 and the 306 GTI. And in the case of the 306 GTI, here was a car that was genuinely engineered for both fun and refinement. And what about the interior? Well, it's typical French fare, to be honest, all rather plasticky. But this car has something rather different because it says here six. So this car must have a six speed gearbox. A 306 GTI with a six speed gearbox, what can it all possibly mean? It means that this is a special Peugeot 306 GTI. This is the 306 GTI 6. Now this is one rare car. You see lots of standard 306 GTIs around, but not many of these. It's got uprated brakes and suspension. It's got a storming 2 litre 167 brake horsepower engine. If you wanted a car to use on the track as well, this is the one to go for. And by the way, it'll beat the pants off a Golf GTI. What I would say to you is, as a second-hand buy, Peugeot, it's, it's quite an interesting point because they seem to age very rapidly and then just stop. Yeah. The initial wear and tear does knock a few edges and corners yeah. off. But then they'll stay exactly the same for years and years and years, yeah. even with huge interstellar mileage. Mm. You're actually getting a car that is surprisingly right. sturdy. They're tough. Well, that was a little more positive, Paul. It was. Um, it's it's a cracking car. It really is fantastic. I love the six-speed box and the engine. It's very, very responsive and very. it feels really sporty. However, the car really lets itself down on its interior. The dash, you don't like that, do you? No, the dash, I mean, it's not, it's not really appalling, but it just could be better. It could be a lot better. Well, we're going to find out what you really, really want yeah. out of the three. We will find your final verdict very shortly, but before we do that, it is time for the Trading Post with Peter. So, you happy with the interior? Let's look at the thing that does the work, the engine. Once you've got the bonnet up, first thing I would do while you're under here is check the chassis number. Make sure that the chassis number there that's stamped on the bodywork, you can either find them on the bulkhead here or up in the windscreen, and the aluminium Vintag plate. Make sure that they tally up with the uh, V5 or the logbook. Make sure they don't, this one especially, doesn't look like it's been tampered with. It generally means uh, that the plate's been off for some reason. So you need to look into it a little further if that's the case. Check the oil, dip the oil, see how clean that is. That's quite clean actually as we speak, but if it's black and sludgy, thick, doesn't mean to say, you know, it just means to say that the, the car's due a service or has not been serviced for some time, so check that. Check the water, have a look inside the radiator cap, make sure that there's no oil in there, because if there is, that generally means that the head gasket's on its way out or as indeed is already gone. Normally, I'll check the colour of the water. If it's blue or red, it means it's got antifreeze in, but you can taste it. If it tastes sweet, that means it's got antifreeze in, so that means it's a, that's a good sign. And then just look for any rust. This is where the chassis is, see? So make sure there's no rust anywhere. And if you're quite happy with that, we'll start it up. Listen out for any loud noises, rattling or knocking or anything like that. Sometimes you'll get a rattle, it generally goes away a few seconds later. That, that means that the, you know, the, the oil's just working its way around the engine, but if it stays there, the noise, 
then it means that it's worn or something's on its way out. So that needs to be investigated further. Give it a rev up. And check for the, the, what colour the smoke is that comes out of the exhaust. If it's white, that's okay. That's probably condensation. It's nothing to be too worried about. But if it's blue or black, then that generally means that the engine's worn. So you'd probably walk away from it. Also, get the person you're buying the car off to move the car back, have a look underneath where it's been stood for a while, see if there's any oil leaks. If there's any oil on the floor or a pool of oil, then you've got an oil leak problem. It could be something or nothing, or it could be uh, a major job. So, it's, you know, that needs investigating further, or it's also a sign that the engine's worn. And once you've satisfied yourself with that, then we'll move on to the car's history. But that's something we'll be looking at next week. Thank you, Peter. So, the verdict. Paul, not a big surprise. In third place, your favourite. Yeah. <laughs> well, in third place, my favourite, the Rover. No, it's not, honestly. Really poor styling, like poor driving, really poor. Bit more of a surprise. Second place, yeah, the Golf. Um, I think if, if I'd have been looking for a family car, it would have won. Uh, but it is not a sporty hot hatch anymore, certainly okay. with that engine. Well, you see this? That's my smug face, that is. Because <laughs> <laughs> winning is the car that I thought you'd go for, the yeah, Peugeot 306 GTI 6. It really is an absolutely smashing car. It's, it's fast, it's got a great gearbox, and it still looks good. It's you not know? put you off VW, no, but you no, do like the I Peugeot. Do. I've, I, for, for the needs that must, with the choice that I've had, I've had to go with the, the real hot hatch, hatch out of the three. It's still what Peugeot set out to make it, you know, back in the days of the 205 and the 309. Well, Paul, thank you very much for being our punter this week and for giving us your verdict my on those my cars. Pleasure. That's it for this week. Join us next week, though, for more used car heaven.